Brandon Lewis here of Embedded Commuting Design, and this is day two of Embedded World 2017. I'm here at the Parasoft booth, Hall 4, booth 416, and I'm here with the two Marks, Mark Brown and Mark Lambert. And one thing that we've been talking about that's really interesting is that when IoT happened, it was kind of like, get the product out the door, get it into deployment, and then just iterate on top of it and we'll figure it all out later, right? Well, that's okay in certain scenarios, like that works in the IT and enterprise model, but for embedded devices, that's kind of a problem because a lot of times embedded devices are secure or running very safety critical systems. So we've been discussing that a little bit and the marks have a little bit of an opinion. So should I start with Mr. Lambert or Mr. Brown? It's all Mr. Brown. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think what uh, Parasoft's been really looking at is how can we help organizations that are evolving in the IoT space because it's bringing together IT and the embedded worlds. And there are technologies that we have in the IT space that we believe are very useful in the IoT area as well. Uh, so what we're talking about is really an end-to-end -end testing platform, helping people with unit testing and API testing, and also having ways to virtualize the components of these IoT systems using service virtualization. And that allows people to really look at how do they bring together and test both normal and abnormal conditions and scenarios that you're going to experience in the real world. And that, that's a key piece as well because it's very hard to test the environment, right? You know, you've gone from being in an embedded world, traditionally I'm an individual component, now I'm a system of a system with a dependency on external vendors that I have no idea, right? It's right. not all the same company, it's not all one individual vendor, we've got to all talk together. And this is where service virtualization can really help. And it's heavily leveraged in enterprise IT for um, isolating mainframe backends, RESTful services, MQ transactions, things like that. And what we're seeing in the embedded world as, as organizations are looking to the connected things, they can use that same capability. So service virtualization, providing a virtual test bed to test um, anomalous um, data situations, functional data, network characteristics, what happens if I'm running under certain um, performance uh, load on my backend system, how does that affect the functionality of the, of the application? Right. Because as we were talking about, over the air updates, it's not really the right way to go, because, yeah. And, and one of the one of the most interesting things that I've seen today at the show and yesterday for that matter is the fact that security in a lot of cases is kind of overhyped from the aspect of, you know, there's a Jeep hack, right? Like somebody's gonna hack into my Jeep and make my car crash. The real the real possibility is probably more likely gonna be a hundred million lines of code in a connected car that is running multiple safety critical systems. So right now what you guys are saying is that using kind of this agile test, there's not an excuse not to do it anymore for embedded systems, right? Right. And and you would bring up the concept of security and say, okay, it's a it's a it's a trade off, right? The amount of time that you're willing to hack something um, the most exploits aren't at kind of hacking your, your network communication. Most exploits are by able to expose some functionality somehow in the back end of the piece of code. Right. So really what you have to do is you have to mix several things together. You have to mix the static analysis of the code to identify potential defects that you've actually introduced at the code layer, but then using something like service virtualization and API testing, being able to test the scenarios where maybe all of the security stuff's working fine, right? Your TLS, all of your con your connections are encrypted, right. but all of a sudden you've got a weird payload that came from your external vendor that you weren't quite expecting a number there, you were expecting a string, and that's somehow thrown an exception inside your code base. Mm -hmm. And that, as you said, can then, you know, your car's veering off the, the freeway when it's not supposed to, for example. Right. That's some really good stuff. For those of you who are uh, interested in more, come to Embedded World uh, Hall 4, booth 416, right? Great, or just keep watching. Thanks.